Hi everyone. I am here today to talk about Persephone Station. As I hit myself, this is a chunker, which I was actually surprised when I got this month. So this Persephone Station was published in January, 2021. And for me, it's still January, 2021. So I'm very excited that I was able to read it the month that it came out. And this was published by Stina Light. I did look up how to say her name back when reading blogs was all the rage and I know that real and I realized that that shows my age her blog was actually one that I read and I really liked her feminist Monday posts but since I haven't I've gotten out of the habit of reading blogs I haven't been reading for a while I haven't actually read anything else that she has written and I can't explain why I have not I don't know uh, but I did hear her do a reading when she came to Kansas City for a science fiction fantasy world convention. I knew that I liked her writing style and I just never picked her up until this time. And I'm glad that this is where I started. I look forward to reading more. So this is a science fiction book set on a world called Persephone. This book follows three main points of views, um, Angel, Rosie and Kennedy, but I feel like we are in Angel's point of view most often. So Angel is ex-military and she was before that trained in a Japanese military style, but was kicked out of that and then went into the military. And this isn't a spoiler. She talks about it at the very beginning of the book. And after getting out of the military, she settles on Persephone and it's now a mercenary and that is working with people that she worked with in her military days. And it's a fun bunch of women. I think the author even considers this a feminist sci-fi book. So there are, there are a lot of female central characters, female villain, everything pushing it forward. And I'm not giving away who the villain is because you find that out at the very beginning of the book as well. You know who the villain is throughout the whole book. So, and so this is a book is, has been written as a standalone. However, I hope she writes more, even if it's not a continuation of these characters, but in the same universe, I think she's really created a very unique and engaging sci-fi universe. I would love to follow these characters some more. All right, so kind of following the cop pile tradition from the last review, characters. I actually gave this a 10 out of 10. I love these characters and I love the work that Stina did uh, creating them. They each one felt whole and like, go and like they had a backstory and that backstory actually related to what was going on in this book, but without taking like a major focus away from the story that we actually have. And like I said, I would really love to follow more, like get more stories with these characters. Even if Angel and Rosie and Kennedy aren't the main focus, I would still love to read something that they're in. And so I'm hoping that she writes more in this universe. For atmosphere, I gave it a nine. So Persephone is a hostile world and the indigenous population lives outside of the one city or the one human city because the rest of the world doesn't know about the indigenous population. Again, not a spoiler because it's on the cover jacket um, or the synopsis and in first chapter you meet them. The, this indigenous population calls themselves the emissaries. So for the good, for the first chunk of the book, you are situated in the only human city, which is called Brenner. And I think she, I think Stina did a great job setting up how that city is, setting up how the politics work, the environment works, the society. And then you got to experience with Angel when she leaves the city the rest of the world and how things are similar to things that they know 
but also at the same time are completely different. And so they're grasping for things that they know to identify what they're seeing and how it's just not what they expected it would be. So I gave this, an, I gave the atmosphere a nine out of 10. For writing, I also gave it a nine out of 10. There were a few things that threw me out of the story, but overall it wasn't something that kept me from picking up the book again. For plot, I gave it an eight out of 10. And that's only because the plot was telegraphed from the very beginning of the book. And so you knew how everything was going to go or well, no, let me take it back. You knew how the book was going to need to end or at least what the climactic event was going to be, or maybe just me because I read a lot of science fiction. And so while it did not detract from me because I'm more of a character reader than a plot reader, it, I couldn't say that it was a perfect plot. And for entry, I gave it eight out of 10 really was enjoying it and like i said even though you you know kind of what the ending climax confrontation has to look like there was still a lot of you you didn't know which characters were gonna get to the end you really didn't know there were some stylistic choices that stina did that i think worked and didn't work at the same time so she has three main points of view, but she doesn't show you everything from those points of view. So you don't necessarily know everything that's going to be happening. Spoiler. So there is a battle later in the book and two characters are on different sides of that battle. And you see a setup for one of the characters and then you follow the rest of the battle from the other character's point of view including the ending where those two characters reunite. You don't know exactly, you have a basic idea of how that, them coming back together happened, but you didn't get to see it happen. And that kind of took some of the, I don't know, for me it took some of the emotional interest, this part of the intrigue out of the story because you didn't see it happen. At the same time, it was very realistic how the character who obviously wasn't there for the other part reacted and you get to you're very much in their head but because we had already established that we were following these three characters i would have liked to have seen more of the behind the scenes so for logic i gave it a 10 out of 10. everything the characters did were in line with how they had been set up from the beginning so i never felt like there was any moment where they made a decision that was not in line with their personality and their beliefs. So I gave that a 10 out of 10. And for enjoyment, I gave it a 10 out of 10 because this was a book that I quite easily was reaching for. Every time I sat down and didn't have anything else to do, I wanted to read this book. And to be honest, this is a book that I hope to buy and own and have on my own shelf and reread because I really did enjoy this. With all, taking in all the scores, Kyle Pyle took my ratings and compiled it to a five star read. And like I said, I really enjoyed it and I hope that you guys read it too. I know there are a couple people out there in the booktube community who have also expressed interest and I hope they get to this book soon because I really want to know what they thought of it. As well as if any of you have read this book already, please let me know. And if you're wanting to read it, please let me know that as well. Thank you for watching and have a good day.